Hello! Welcome back into yet another edition of one of our Wet Spot unboxing videos. We'll just take a quick look at some of the neat things that we got in this time. There's boxes everywhere. So first off, we'll be looking at one of my favorites in this week. Sorry, fish. Somebody's got to be up there near the top. Oh man, what is it? Oh, it's dragon puffers. What a great fish. The dragon puffer, sometimes also called the humpback puffer, uh, we prefer to sometimes call them pow palambangensis, is a wonderful ambush predator that comes from Southeast Asia, have a surprisingly wide range, uh, Thailand, I believe, Laos to Indonesia, so there's a pretty big stretch. Uh, speaking of big stretches, these are going to be a larger puffer, not as big as, say, Fajacas or Mbus, of course, but they are going to reach a maximum of a about seven and a half, eight inches. They don't seem to grow very fast, but they definitely will get that big. We have had some very large ones show up in the store before that we're probably pushing that. Uh, like I mentioned, can't hone this enough. These are ambush predators in nature. They would, I presume, be trying to be a rock, a piece of wood, something else uh, to snag an unsuspecting fish that swims by. That obviously means that you probably don't want to keep them with anything else. Although, Weirdly enough, they seem to mostly be okay with their own species. About the only one of the really, really mean, so to speak, puffers that I can think of like that, so long as you give enough space. They're not particularly active, and since they do eat fish in the wild, you don't normally need to, you know, mess around too much with snails, just being patient and giving them frozen food with hard shells like clams, brine shrimp, krill will be just fine for them. Alright, next up, let's see what else we got. What should be, forgive me, a wet spot unboxing first. This is Bedotia, Bedotia, however you want to say it, Madagascariensis, the Madagascar rainbow fish. Uh, it's a very interesting fish. Of course, you don't see really all that much of anything from Madagascar in the hobby, and of course, none of it's wild caught anymore, since export from Madagascar is illegal, meaning that these are, of course, tank raised. In Madagascar, they do have little bit of a range. There's a few different populations, and of course there's a couple other species that we unfortunately don't see in the hobby. These in particular are from more of the eastern part of Madagascar, kind of coastal drainages. Uh, you'll often read them only getting about four inches. I swear that I've seen some probably closer to five and a half, six, but more that four and a half, five inch mark is more what you'd want to shoot for. Uh, like a lot of other rainbow fish, they are going to spend a lot of time in the midwater. They're obviously gorgeous with a backdrop of plants, and they appreciate large water changes. Uh, given that they are, of course, no longer uh, captive bred, and they are just a bit more riverine than a lot of rainbows you see in general, one thing I would recommend is definitely keeping your water uh, nice and clean and well oxygenated for these. But just a wonderful fish, and they're not Bedotia gayi. That is a different species. Next up, some of our more avid viewers may recognize this as a time that typically a cichlid pops up, and of course here it is, Epistogramma trifasciata, often called the three-stripe Episto, uh, is a wonderful little dwarf cichlid, like all, most all Epistos, I guess I'd say, a few of those get a little bigger. Uh, these are naturally found in Brazil, even parts of Argentina and Paraguay, which means that they can typically tolerate some cooler temperatures than a lot of other Epistos can. Uh, anecdotal of course but i believe that there's a couple cases of these being kept where the temperatures dipped as low as 50 would not surprise me uh, these are one of my favorite epistos for a couple reasons males and females are very easy to tell apart in my opinion they're both beautiful female gets that standard kind of bright yellow when she's you know in a good mood wanting to spawn males get these really nice hints of red with really nice powder blue up top and they're small males will reach maybe two inches tops females being a little smaller they're easy to breed, they're very, very hardy, they're very adaptive to a wide range of parameters. Uh, in my opinion, probably the best beginner Episto, just one that we've had a lot of luck with that also looks nice. And there we go, there's a nice male starting to strut his stuff a little bit. Just a great little fish. Uh, there are a few color varieties. There are even, with the Epistogramma system, there's a couple different uh, variants that are labeled across their fairly wide range. These guys are going to be, again, that classic kind of powder blue with bits of red there uh, up at the top, but it's a wonderful fish. All right, 
right, next up, we'll take a look at this guy, one of my absolute favorite garrisons, even, dare I say, not even just Tetras. Bath the Atheops, Bruza Gemis, uh, the Red Cap Moon Tetra, sometimes called the Blood Cap Moon Tetra, but just a wonderful, uh, unfortunately, not too commonly seen fish, seems to kind of come and go in spurts in the hobby, uh, that's found in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Part of why I like this fish so much is it seems to be pretty sturdy, gets some size, males be about almost three inches long, tiny bit under that, females a tiny bit smaller than that even. Uh, and most of all, in addition to being hardy and decently sized without being too big, is they're beautiful. Males especially will get this really, really nice kind of crystalline look uh, behind kind of what our shoulders would be. They'll get a red streak to them and just a wonderful, wonderful looking Tetra. A lot of contrast, a lot of things going on with their look. They're active, they're fairly bold. This is one that I really need to get my hands on sooner than later that I haven't actually kept yet. Uh, I will say that there is a lot of confusion in the literature and with just kind of surrounding this Tetra in general, where there's a couple other species like Bathyatheops green eye or green wood eye, there's a couple in there, but ours are Bruzagemi. As I've probably drilled into everyone's heads at this point, it's time for the catfish section. I love catfish, and it's one that I haven't kept in a long time. Dianema urostriatum, the flagtail porthold cat. And you can see right there that wonderful flag tail on that beautiful black and white, and the body's kind of a, a pinkish. These are found in the Brazilian Amazon, it seems like exclusively. Uh, they are a close relative of Corydoras, for those that aren't super familiar with these fish. Uh, Calicthiidae, the family, of course, armored catfish, and these guys, you can kind of sort of stretch and treat them like a quarry. They do school very nicely, they're very peaceful, they're not really predatory, and they do get some good size. Uh, I've had some, uh, somebody donated it to a shop that I used to work at, and it, I took it home, and it was probably six inches long. It was very large, but preferably, again, they should be in schools. The more the merrier, and my personal opinion is that the more of them you have, the more likely they are to move around as well. Uh, kind of a nice other challenge for this fish is there's one breeding report. We have one. Maybe they're a bubble nester. Maybe they're a pit spawner. We don't know. So anyone out there looking for kind of, you know, an interesting fish to really take a whack at, this would be a good one so we can further that understanding. I'm sure there's more reports than that that I can't read in German or Swedish or something. Next up, got yet another catfish. This is Rinkadorus woodsi, the parrot dorated, or sometimes they're also called alien mutant catfish, which is interesting, I guess. Uh, another weirdo, this one is from Ecuador, although there are some records of them occurring in Peru. Uh, enjoy this footage right here. That's about the most they ever move when it's not feeding time. They'll reach about four inches in length maximum. Uh, they are just small, cute little guys. Again, very peaceful. Uh, another not really carnivorous fish, but this is a lot of what they do. A little bit of moving around, a lot of time they'll shove themselves into a piece of wood. They do also seem to be a bit social. I would recommend getting a group of these guys. Uh, purely mathematically, the more of these you have, the more likely you are to see them, but just a nice, neat little oddball. And now for something completely different, we're going to take a look at Epiplotus annulatus, the clown killie, or sometimes one of my favorite names, called the rocket killie, because males have a bright red tail, nice striping, and because they're really good at rocketing out of an uncovered tank. Make sure that they have a lid or a ton of floating plants, and you're willing to gamble, because who boy will they jump, just like pretty much every other killie. The very neat fish, they're naturally found in Guinea and Sierra Leone and Liberia, and they're very small. Uh, they'll only top out at a little over an inch, would be gigantic. Uh, they are not annual killies. A lot of misconceptions about that. The annulatus refers to the rings on the body, not how long they'll live. So rest assured, you know, you got more time than that, feel free to keep these. They're a wonderful little fish. They do tend to spar a little bit, and preferably would be kept in groups, which should be easy. They're very small, uh, but best kept in planted or very nicely, you know, peated or tannin tanks to keep them a little dark with, again, that cover or lid, and they'll be very rewarding. Lots of action, lots of color. Males and females look very different. They're fairly easy to spawn. Just a neat little fish. Uh, obviously, these are quite tiny, about a centimeter long, and they'll get there, but just cute little thing. Very, very popular for a good reason. Next 
Next up, we're going to veer back into the comfort zone of yet more catfish. Time for our typical pleco. Pseudolithoxus anthrax, sometimes called L-235, the flat flyer pleco, which is of course found in Venezuela. It's a nice little pleco, gets about five inches long, uh, is going to be a grazing omnivore, typically very easy to keep in the aquarium. We'll do some algae cleaning, definitely wouldn't rely on it just for that. Treat your plecos well, treat your janitors even better, I always say. And of course, they'll definitely be pretty easy in my experience to train on a frozen food or occasionally like shrimp pellets, but very neat, fairly bold, active pleco that you can probably guess given their flat body comes from fast flowing waters. It would be really neat to set up a nice biotope where there's quite a bit of flow for them. Um, and of course, plenty of oxygenation and clean water is a must with these guys. But just a really neat pleco. I really enjoy that, especially males as they get larger, get very spiny looking. It's pretty neat. All right, time for some name dropping. For those of you that don't know your aquarium history, one, I'd strongly recommend getting some good books and sitting down and doing some research. Who are you who does not know your history indeed? But it's time for us to talk about the humble neon, particularly this really nice variety, the diamond head, or sometimes just called diamond, that has a very shiny blue eye kind of streak to it, and that nice red just really, really pops. I like this variety quite a bit. Uh, neon tetras in general are found all over South America, weirdly enough. Uh, Peru, Brazil, and Colombia each boast populations according to several different records. Uh, as we all know, neons are typically pretty hardy, fairly adaptable, and get about an inch long, you know, about the most peaceful thing on Earth. Just a wonderful fish, but here's some history for those not in the know, and my favorite part. Neon tetras were first sent to Paris in 1935, where they sold to some German and hobbyists for, I believe, the modern-day equivalent of about $6,500. The second they were discovered, oh boy, everyone freaked out because it was like nothing that anyone had ever seen. Uh, 1936, of course, the first ones were collected and sent via the Hindenburg to the Shedd Aquarium. There's all sorts of people involved with the start of the neon, so to speak, like Augusta Rabout, Fred Kochu, George Myers, uh, and William Inge. Just a bunch of big heavy hitter names that I'll leave you guys to do some researching on. All right, and of course, to finish this up, we're going to veer into Alana Cara territory. A uh, very, very nice peacock that we'll be featuring for this one. Alana Cara Malandi, the sulfur head. Very ubiquitous. Uh, it is a very nice peacock for a lot of reasons, although there's not a lot of bad ones, in fairness. Uh, I'll get the blue and yellow joke out of the way. Yep, they're blue and yellow. Welcome to Lake Malawi cichlids. Uh, the sulfur heads in particular, jokes aside, are from the southeastern part of Malawi. Uh, I believe there's two populations of memory serves at West Reef and Eccles Reef. Uh, and that is where you get that beautiful yellow head, that population. It's a smaller peacock, I would say, kind of normal size, so to speak. Reaches about five inches on a big male. Uh, and part of why they are both popular is their beauty. Uh, know that we're not seeing much right now but just envision this beautiful kind of royal blue to the body and then this beautiful whitish yellow streak to the head just a wonderful looking fish and in addition uh like some other alanacar species and kind of rare for a malawi cichlid is that they're kind of wimpy i definitely wouldn't go you know throwing these in your average community but they're quite peaceful uh they definitely aren't going to be one high up beating everybody down below them so you do want to be mindful of what you put them with especially to bring out color but just a nice fish to kind of end this on feel free to check us out at wetspottropicalfish.com or follow us on facebook and instagram to get links to our most updated stock list uh, that have all our fish available for purchase